What's going on guys, Fulst here and I am back with another video. In today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Volibear jungle guide. Volibear won the poll as you can see right now. If you guys want to vote for the next champion, for the next poll, make sure to do so. There you just hit the notification bell, you can look at the community tab, the, commu the, the polls will go up, you can vote, whichever champion has the most votes after 24 hours will win and be the next guide. So make sure to do that if you want. Also if you want to catch me streaming live on Twitch, you can, there is a link in the description. And you catch me there, I stream quite a bit, so yeah, come hang out there. And with that being said, let's get right into the guide. So Volibear is extremely strong and extremely impressive in the early game, which means that going press the attack alongside that is by far the best rune you could get for jungle. Um, going top lane Conqueror might become a little bit better, but after the Conqueror nerfs it's stacking a little bit later. Press will just do more for you in general. You can easily combo this and get this to proc, so your damage will increase very, very easily. So this counts off of just auto attacks, Qs, everything. Just really easy procs on the press. That's why this is just the best rune for Volley Bear. Now, as some people might think that Face Rush, you see some players play Volley with Face Rush. It's just not better damage-wise when it comes to comparing it to press. You can make up for the face rush by just simply going Nimbus Cloak and then taking Blue Smite and you can run people down quite easily. It's mainly for the press, this is going to give you the early 1v1 advantage and overall will snowball you the best throughout the game. So you definitely want to get press, you follow that up with Triumph just to have that extra missing health sustain. Volibear is a frontline champion, you play more so tanky and just having the missing health back every time you get a kill or assist will be uh, very valuable. So definitely want to make sure you pick that. And then for this one it's either the Alacrity or the Tenacity. If the enemy team has a lot of CC, you definitely want to get the Tenacity. If not, then you can get the attack speed instead. Attack speed is never a bad thing, but you definitely need the CC reduction if the enemy team does have quite a lot of it. Now for this one right here, you can go either Last Stand or Coup de Gras. Both work. Last Stand is more so if you are going to fa be facing like more duelist-based champions. A lot of champions that will go for extended fights against you and all that type of stuff that will... Like just have a better time fighting you in general. Then the last stand works really well against those because you're gonna get more damage and overall be better in those one v one situations. If the enemy team is very squishy and you do think that you have the upper hand in a lot of situations, which Volibear does quite quickly, then Coup de Gras is the better bet, so you can just execute people a bit easier. So those are really the options. You do not want to get cut down simply because you are building very tanky on Volibear anyway, and yeah, max maximum HP. You're never really getting that. Uh, for the secondary tree, there's basically one option. You want to get Nimbus Cloak no matter what. This is just by far the best rune you could get. This allows you to easily engage. It allows you to, like, you can blue smite Nimbus Cloak proc, run up with Q, and there's nothing the enemy can do about it. And no matter how much mobility you have, you just run at them with so much movement speed. It's just insane. It is by far the most versatile rune for this. You can use this for dives because you can smite, get in range with your ultimate a lot easier. Just having that mobility, having that movement speed so you cannot get kited is very, very valuable and would highly be recommended to pick up on Volibear. Now for the secondary one, you simply want to get water walking. This is for two reasons. The first reason is to have better 1v1 potential in the river when it comes to scuttle crabs. Um, if you fight people early game with press the attack and water walking, then you're most likely going to be coming ahead, uh, coming out ahead on Volibear when it comes to scuttle fights. So that's just really good. And the other thing is you can roam through river a lot faster. So let's say you are doing like scuttle crap and you see a fight going on top side, for example, or the top lane. You can really like have that 25 movement speed extra to walk up a lot faster and just catch people. Overall for dragon control, rift arrow control and just rift scuttle fights, water walking is by far the best bet to pick up secondary alongside Nimbus Cloak. Now for the runes here, you want to get attack speed, this is really for your early jungle clear speed, you definitely want to get this so you can get more auto attacks off, get your like passive stack faster, your lightning stack faster, so you can get that off really just a lot quicker. Then you want to get some adaptive force and then armor or magic resist depending on the enemy jungler really. Um, if the enemy jungler is AP you can get magic resist, AD you get armor, and this is just completely to like have a better chance at 1v1 really, so yeah. That's basically it for the runes on Volibear. If you guys have any questions on this, make sure to do that in the comments, put that there. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. And let's move on to the item build now. All right, so for the item build on Volley, you have the Hunter's Machete start with a refillable potion. This is by far the best start you can get. You wanna go for a quick three camp clear on Volibear in like 
pretty much all of your games. You can also add in the Wolves camp in between. So you want to just go double buff camp Gromp. And then maybe Wolves if you have the time or anything like that. If there's nothing really going on on the map. Usually though you can play very aggressive with Volley Bear. So what you want to do is just do a three camp clear. And then look to either invade or just gank top mid. You can even trade flashes if you want really easily. If you can get just get your Q onto the enemy champion when you're ganking top lane, for example, if you're slightly pushed up, you're going to get the kill. So this machete will unlock that and just give you the fastest possible clear on those three camps. And that's really what you're looking for. Now to upgrade this, you want to get the blue smite on Volley Bear pretty much every single time, simply because you're already going to be extremely tanky and extremely good in dueling situations. So red smite isn't as good, but the blue smite also helps you in catching people a lot easier. So you can have Nimbus Cloak, blue smite and your Q movement speed. All of that movement speed stacks up and you just run them down. There's absolutely nothing they can do. And you can just get a free pick off and a free kill that way. This is the highest gank pressure you can have. And it's very, very difficult for the enemy to actually deal with a blue smite volley bear running at them. There's absolutely nothing you can do to live that. Unless, of course, you get counter ganked or whatever. But that's about it. Like Turrets don't help because if volley bear hits 6 as well, you can just ult a turret and it's just really free. So blue smite and you want to upgrade this blue smite into the cinderhawk enchant. Cinderhawk is by far the best enchant since it gives you the best clear speed as long as sorry as well as making you extremely tanky in the same pro like in, with the same item. So the way you want to use this cinderhawk is basically just queue the camps consistently. So make sure you keep queuing your camps. So this you proc the cinderhawk and you basically one shot the entire camp. So all you really can do is you just like preemptively use E on the camp, run at it with Q, Q the big one in the camp, camp dies completely in one second, and you move on. That's just keeping the Cinderhawk proc going. Of course, you don't want to Q the camp as a fight if a fight is about to break out, but that's completely like situation dependent. If you could just Q the camp to CC the camp, you can get the Cinderhawk emo like the uh, the damage buff out of it, and then you just basically deleting camps left and right. So Volley Bear's clear speed's actually really really good after the Cinderhawk, after the Bami Cinder. Really, you can already start doing it after the Bami Cinder. But yeah, now another thing is the boots on volley, getting early boots, like for, for for example, a first back, you can go blue smite boots if you are looking to gank more so than farm. If you're looking to farm, if game is very stalemate, then instead of spending the 950 gold you would have then for boots and, boots and blue smite, you can get the buy me cinder since this will promote your farming game a little bit more and then you can farm faster. So it really game dependent, but in a lot of situations when you have the pressure, when you have gank potential you want to go blue smite boots to have them like the mobility to just catch people and then the moment you pick up cinder hulk you can transition into a very clear heavy like play style and just like you'll be able to out farm the enemy jungler fairly easily at that point so that's basically it for the starting items now the main core items i mean the main damage core item you can build is triforce so you can have a setup like right here actually the boots i mean the boots for volley i forgot it's basically either ninjas or mercs, depending on if they have CC or not, basically. So it's very straightforward. You're just going to get one of these two boots. Now, again, moving from this, the main damage item you want to get is Triforce. Triforce is extremely good on Volley Bear. It just synergizes with his kit really, really well. So this is a very good item to pick up. Now, you do not want to pick up Triforce if you're doing bad or if you are going like... If you're just having a bad game, like you get invaded or something, like you your ganks don't work out, you're falling behind fights don't go your way, then you just want to build straight up tank. You don't want to go Triforce first. But if your game is going decently to good, of course, then you want to get the Triforce first. Since just one damage item on Volley does a lot. Like just having Triforce alongside just Cinderhawk, Blue Smite and just Boots, it gives a really, really good amount of damage. Volley Bear has high base damages already. Synergizing really well with Triforce on top of everything is just a very valuable item. So this would be a damage item. Now the way I would build this is usually if you are like going for it like if you have the money for it phase is the best option simply because if you hit people they have a difficult time getting away from you because of the extra movement speed bonuses from this so that's really the main one to follow this up you can go for the sheen which is then better and then the stinger you the reason sheen is better is because if you walk up to somebody and you're like w's as well they will all do increased damage with sheen so this the like the item value is in this specific order right here you don't necessarily need this stinger because it only gives attack speed. Sure, it gives 10% CDR, but mainly the attack speed is what this gives. And you, like with your Q and your W, you have enough auto attacks you can do to where the attack speed doesn't necessarily matter that early on. You can still, of course, build it when you're going for Triforce, but the value of the items in this specific order is the best one. 
So right there, Triforce. This is just a very core build. Again, if you don't like, if you're not doing well in the game, please don't build Triforce. Please build Tanky because that's just going to be a lot better for you in general. Now, what does Tanky imply? It is just, I mean, from this point onwards, from like whether you build Triforce or not, the build's pretty much going to be the same because you're going to build full tank, full engage potential, making sure that you're very difficult to kill. And if you're going to be more difficult to kill, you're of course going to deal more damage in fights. Volley Bear has really good base damages and everything. So, yeah. So, good tank items for Volley are right. Glory is extremely, extremely strong. This basically allows you to engage at the same time. Now, usually if you're not doing too great, then Righteous Glory is the item you want to rush instead of Triforce. Simply because this allows you to engage for your team. You can run up with Righteous Glory, slow and everything. This is just a very, very solid engage. It's also a really cheap item, so you can pick it up very easily as well. So it's overall just a good combination. Like, yeah, if you're not doing well, you can like not get Triforce, get Righteous and just make sure you can do the engage for your team. Now, after the Triforce, Righteous is still a solid option. If you're noticing that you're lacking the engage potential, then going Righteous is a very valuable choice. Now, like Thormill is also a good option if you just need the armor, really. Also, healing reduction from this item is very good. And then also the basic attack speed reduction is very nice as well. So this overall just combines really well and just having a solid armor item on this. It can never go wrong, really. If you go Triforce into Thormill, that's a perfectly fine build. You're going to be extremely tanky against like 80 champions. So if those are the main threat, you want to go for it. If you need healing reduction, you can also simply just pick up the, um, like right here. You can also just simply pick up the Bramble Vest if you just need the healing reduction and then build into a different item. That's completely fine as well. So that's something you can look for. Now, of course, against crit champions, Randomance is a very solid option. Deadman's Plate, I do want to mention this. It is okay. But it's in general better to go for Righteous Glory instead of Deadman's Blade because they buy, they both kind of fill the same role. But for Volley Bear especially, you already have the Q movement speed, you have the Nimbus Cloak, your Blue Smite and everything. You can already get in fairly easily, so the extra movement speed from this doesn't necessarily matter a whole lot. But the more so, the moment you can't, like you go in with those abilities, then Righteous is better because it already like slows as well. So you're kind of just having a better engage out of an item. That's why Deadman's it really isn't that worth it over Righteous Glory. If you're going for an item that needs like that extra movement speed, that needs that extra engage, then Righteous Glory is the better buy. Now, other good items right here are the Stone Plates. It's a very valuable item in the later stages. So like a sixth item is where you can think of this. Maybe a fifth item as well. This gives you 80 armor, 80 magic resist, basically, because you're going to run in into the enemy team. Now, Volley Bear has like good cc good like engage potential so you can definitely just proc the stone plate soak up as much damage as possible and then that way you're just going to be unkillable really if you just proc this at the right time there's absolutely nothing the enemy team can do so that's a very good option there magic resist items i mean you can just get the adaptive helm if you need like if you need this against cassio karthus vladimir stuff like that just that does consistent damage with that same spell over and over so like Vlad Q will he will use that a lot Vlad E and everything like that it, Cassio E of course Carthus Q there's a lot of those types of champions those types of abilities where adaptive helm is just very very good now you can also of course pick up a spirit visage just to be very tanky increases all healing received as well which is very nice and this is just an overall solid magic resist item again here stone plate very solid magic resist item as well and now the final item i do want to mention on this specifically is the health in its warmox warmox is very very good on volley bear it's mostly if you're building it's like a fifth item option maybe sixth as well because well unless you don't go triforce of course then you can build it like at a third maybe fourth item option really and it would be better then but this is very valuable because what you can do with warmox basically is you can run into an enemy team Engage with Q, engage with ultimate maybe, use E, like do whatever, run in with Righteous, slow, make an engage happen, tank as much damage as possible, then run out of the fight, use the Warmox healing to get back the full HP, and then just run into the fight again. Like this can allow you to sustain throughout a long stage and throughout a long period of team fighting, which is very, very valuable if you play around this properly. Also gives a lot of maximum HP, which scales really well with Wooly Bear as well. So it's overall a very valuable item. Now, what would a regular build look like in an average game? If I'm doing pretty well, it's going to go Blue Smite, Boots, and whatever boots fit, Triforce. And then I'll go for one of the 
like defensive items. So I'll go either an armor item if I do need it, like maybe healing reduction, thorn mill is an option I could go for. You can also go crit reduction if you do value that a little bit higher and don't really need the healing reduction. You can go magic resist, of course, if they have like what I mentioned, Casio, you can go like adaptive. You can also go spirit visage, but it's mainly just gonna be the salt for a tank item. You can still go righteous glory. So you wanna go fourth slot tank item, look for what you need. Look If you need engage righteous, if you need extra armor slash healing reduction, thorn mill, if you need magic resist, one of the magic resist items, and that's good. So let's just say you went thorn mill in this case, if you just need the like raw armor, don't really need anything else. Then thorn mill, you wanna go war mox right after. This will basically proc your like maximum HP effectively. Now. If you do need the additional magic resist, you can easily go Thornmill into Stoneplate, which is a very solid option. Thornmill Stoneplate is going to give you a massive amount of armor at the same time as giving you a massive amount of magic resist. And it's a very cheap item. Stoneplate is, like, it has an immense value. It's 80 armor, 80 magic resist, and so much extra health if you use this active properly. So this is just a very valuable buy in general. So you can go like Thornmill, Stoneplate, Warmox, last item, or Thornmill, Warmox, Stoneplate last item. Stoneplate and Warmox all like already synergize extremely well because of the fact that Warmox gives you an immense amount of HP, stacking on top of your Cinderhulk, and then Stoneplate will give you 80 armor, 80 magic resist. That's just gonna be way too hard for, for the enemy team to kill, especially if you proc your Stoneplate properly. So like a build like this would be very, very common and very, very strong to build for. So you go core damage setup, core like damage tanky mobility setup, into a tank item like Thornmill, Righteous Glory, Spirit Visage, into a Warmox, into like a Stone Plate. Now, of course, if you need to be more tanky against a specific source, or if they're full AD, you can go like a, a, a similar setup like this. You can go with these three items, Armor item into full AD, Warmox for more HP, so you're harder to kill. And then also you can sustain back and forth into fights, which is a very valuable thing. And then you can just go for like a random as Omen for crit reduction, or just, I mean, any other armor item at that point, really. And yeah, that's basically it for the build for Volibear. If you guys do have questions on this build, make sure to put those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. And let's just move right into the gameplay section now. Alright, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Volibear, of course, into a cane. Now, this matchup for Volibear is actually not that bad. Kane can't really fight you that well early game. He loses the 1v1s quite easily. The only like real advantage Kane has on you early game is his clear speed. And yeah, so what you want to do for this matchup specifically, for champions that have better clear speed and like not the greatest 1v1 potentials, you just want to try to hunt them. You can also look to pressure his lanes in a lot more, but you can go like 3 camp clear into a quick invade on like a red buff or whatever. As long as you play aggressive into stuff like this, then you should be like good. Like that's really what you want to look for. Now as far as maxing order goes on Volibear by the way, for the early start of your jungle clear, you want to go W, E, Q as a one, level 1, 2, 3 option. W is going to give you the best damage initially, then E as well, and then Q basically you're going to need that for the ganks or the pressure you're going to go for. So after those initial three levels, you want to go W max first, Q max second, and then E max last. The reason you want to do it this way is because your W will give a lot of ash, like 1v1 potential and just the most damage in general. So you definitely want to max that first. Then the Q is going to be for just additional move speed and everything. And this is just going to help catching people a lot easier. And your E is really just, I mean, it's based off of maximum health. So in general, getting more points into it doesn't necessarily do a whole lot. It's just going to be very valuable at a one point type of thing. Also, E is very easily dodgeable, which makes it more like... If you put more points into it, into it, you're going to be more reliant on actually hitting it, which is not ideal either. So initially what you want to do is at the 50 second mark, you can start resetting and then place a ward to wherever you want to cover. You can place it here, you can place it on your other buff camp that you're not starting on. Because if the enemy team is going to invade, it's going to be on your other buff camp because no jungler invades to just steal some other random camp. Like, that just doesn't happen. So if you just watch your other buff camp that you're not starting on, you'll know where they like if they invade you or not, and whether you have to play around that or not. Now in this specific situation here, the cane tried to go for a cheese play, I believe. So like we had good vision control from Zoe and everything, and he, like he was trying to go Raptors into smiting my red buff. It's just something you see sometimes, but usually the higher you go, you, people don't really do that anymore. They just go for a normal jungle clear because it's just really inconsistent to do what he just did. As you can see right now, he basically is forced out and he's going to have to walk back to topside, which is a good start for me, making my early game a little bit better. Whoops, I just went back. 
So as you can see, they tried to invade and we just stand in this brush. They didn't walk up. Zoe checked for vision, which is good. Also placed a ward, which basically like allowed Kane, like it forced them back. He couldn't really do much. So as you can see, the initial clear is just W, auto attack the camp as much as possible. And instantly rock the blue buff and then do Gromp. This is going to be the fastest level 3 possible and this is going to give you a very nice spike. Now with this, I initially planned to go and hunt for the Kane in his topside jungle. Look for him maybe because he wanted to do like he started here, which like he has he had to at that point. And he was probably going to clear up towards this. Now this camp does take him a little bit longer, but I can also of course look for the pressure on the Mordekaiser because the wave is building up and the Wukong is pressuring him into the turret. Now he is still low level and turret diving him is very, like, it, it's a good option. So I was initially looking for the pressure on Kane and the pressure on the Mordekaiser on the top side. I can also still go for the mid lane play in this situation as well, but that's on the other side. Now right here, they have it pushed in completely, so there's, no, yeah, I mean, Kane can't really gank this. If he does anything, it's going to be top mid or I don't know. So that's really the game plan here. Now in this specific situation, the Kane kind of thought I was full clearing maybe. I don't know. He checked. He wanted to go for my blue buff. Uh, he tried to go out with E. I stunned him instantly. So he just got hold back. He flashed. I flashed after him and I just get a kill on him right there. So I like he played that a little bit too disrespectful towards Holy Bear in this case and got punished for it. Now off of that play right here, you should see this guy is still level 2. A pre-level 6 Mordekaiser is a really, really easy gank. The only thing it can do early game is flash away, really. And Volley Bear has more than enough pressure to just, I mean, kill people. As you can see right here, I'm just going to run up. He flashes. I run up with like with my Q, as you can see. I didn't really have to do anything. Wukong has ignited as well, so he ignited him. He flashed away. I could just run up, and there's really no issue there. I just basically kill the guy from that range. Take two turret shots, kind of put me very low. Now in this specific situation, I was initially planning to back, but of course the Kane after dying to me here has nothing to clear on his top side, which means he's obviously going to go towards his bot side. You can see him right here with this animation on the spectator, but he's obviously going to go for his bot side camps and also bot, scuts, bot side scuttle at the same time. I will never be able to contest bot side scuttle because their bot lane just has complete prio and also lane slash kill advantage. Not 100% sure what has been going on for that lane, but yeah. So I noticed that and I figured that I have to just take the scuttle as it spawns. Making sure that I do at least get one of the scuttles. You want to try your best not to get double scuttled. And of course try your best at the same time to double scuttle. So right there I just make the decision to go for the scuttle. And then now this is the moment in time where I need to start clearing some more of my camps. I still don't have my Bami Cinder yet because in this specific game right here. As I mentioned earlier as well. I went for the Starker's Blade Boots of Speed option. So I'd have a little bit more pressure for early 1v1s. Early gank pressure into the Mordekaiser. Because I can now really punish this guy. Because the wave is now going to push back towards my Wukong. So I have time to clear some of my camps. Run up. Don't full clear because that's probably not going to give you enough time. But kind of just clear some of my camps, maybe gank mid lane real quick and then just go and punish this guy again because he doesn't have flash. Volley Bear requires that very punishing playstyle so you need to make sure that you keep returning to lanes where you are like going to be useful. Now Kane here takes my Raptor camp which is honestly fine. He doesn't really gain anything from it. And in this specific situation what you see right here, this is something you need to look at as well. This Zoe had no mana at all. Like he had like mana for like one ability or maybe two. He definitely wants to look toward backing. At this point, like, yeah, right here, pretty low HP, like half HP, no mana. Yasuo can pretty much endlessly sustain his lane because he doesn't require mana. The only resource he has to do, deal with is HP. So I definitely want to, like, um, relieve some of this burden for the Zoe. So she can, like, we can push the wave in and she can just get a reset off that. So we see the cane right here, as you can see. And I basically force him back. I have red buff, there's no way he can contest me. And in this case... I just help her push the wave out so she can reset, get her mana, get some of her items. So she will not be in like a more awkward position against the Yasuo. Because basically, with the mana she has right now, she would not be able to sustain a lane against this guy. And would have to take a bad back at some point. So that's something you would take note of as well. Um, try to not take most of the CS. Just get it low. If you take one or two here or there, it's not that bad. But just try to make sure that the Zoe gets more, more of it. Because, of course, you don't want to put your mid laner behind. You're also you're already taking some experience just in order for her to get a good base off. But it's just something you want to take note of. So right here, just push the wave in right there. And Zoe is now able to take it back if she wants it. Which she should. 
at this point not go any further and just take a reset the more time she wastes right now uh, that's just a misplay from zoe this she should have just walked around the wall and started resetting that would have been better but now that aside all right like at around the same time here this volley or sorry the mordekaiser is pushed up as i mentioned earlier looking at the wave position which is very important if you look at top wave like this um, if you see a big wave building up on either side, you can make sure to either dive with that big wave into the enemy team or make sure to punish them for walking up if the big wave pushes towards you. So that's something you can see right here. Uh, the big wave was pushing and as you can see I cleared my like Krugs, then wanted to go for like maybe this camp and run up. In this case however I saw the cane, made the play for mid lane so she could back, which she didn't, it's kind of whatever. And then we just look for the Mordekaiser so now after the entire plan that I already had. So right here, walk up, really. Lead with E if you would walk a little bit back, that would have been pretty nice. But landing the E is going to be pretty difficult regardless. Wukong plays it right here, just backing away and letting me just take the kill. Not greeting for anything, not making sure that like he tries to get the kill or anything and just get something in return for it. That's just not worth it. And just off of that, off of knowing the big wave is going to push towards my top lane and the Mordekaiser was going to push up, I just run there, get the kill. He doesn't have flash because I forced that out earlier and that's really the way that went down. Now the wave went into his turret which is very good, Kane takes the wave and now this wave basically starts pushing towards my top side again. So right here this wave is going to push or slow push towards Wukong. So all I really have to do is because this wave is going to push and I know he really doesn't have any vision yet. I can just go up again, walk, wait in this brush really, and wait for Wukong to get the lane. I don't. He's not six yet, but the main thing here is Mordekaiser isn't six yet either. Mordekaiser is one of those champions that it's really more difficult to gank after he hits six because he can just ult one of you out and then one v one you, one by one really, instead of one v twoing you if you gank. So that's a real difference there. So I'm still gonna take my early play here and I'm gonna make sure that I get this gank off as well so i sweep to make sure there are no wards and i'm just gonna wait for my wukong to get the lane so i can punish this guy once again and that's really the, the like the play style of volley bear you can easily punish lanes that you already went through uh, so like in this game specifically i went for top lane bot lane already became very very difficult after they got a massive early lead so just focusing one champion focusing the top laner down getting my wukong ahead will allow me to play later easily so i stun him I walk in front of him to make sure that he has to walk through me to take more damage. Land my E, land my W and everything, press the attack, and he just dies, really. So right there, again, he has no TP, no flash, and he is 0-3 now because of just really good like pressure ganks and following up off of good wave control. So that's something you want to look for, and yeah, really. Alright, here I wanted to initially just look for the gank on mid lane. In this specific situation, the Kane went for my red buff after he see, like he saw that I ganked top lane, which is a good play from him, because you definitely want to punish those types of things as the enemy jungler. However, in this case, he's level 5, he was on the bot side of the map, so all I really have to do at this point is I don't give a shit that he took my red buff, I'm just going to go ahead and take his red buff. I will go aggressive because I like killed the Mordekaiser, so forced the Yasuo back, and they shouldn't be able to react to this in time. Now, in this specific situation, the Zoe gets extremely greedy. She was already out, she doesn't have any mana anymore, and they just, like, she just basically gets caught out by the, by the Mordekaiser here. Gets ulted as well, and right in this situation, I should have already let her die, because she made the mistake, it wasn't my fault. I couldn't do anything, like, that fight would have just been bad in general. And then Wukong goes back in as well here, I kind of have to help him out, he dies, I'm forced to flash out. So that's just kind of an all-round awkward situation. I kind of let out of the Zoe greeting for something and then getting caught out my Mordekaiser E. But there's not much you can do about that. Now here, I'm just going to go for blue buff. Um, the Kane will try to fight me, maybe. But that really doesn't do anything for him because he never wins those. It might get close, simply because I have a lot of gold in my inventory right now, which is 2k. But I definitely didn't want to give my blue for free. So the way you want to play these fights is in this specific situation, I just use E. It procs, I get a shield, so that's helping me already. And then I will just use my W's on Kane. So basically, it's W's, and then the longer this fight goes on, the more W's I get off. Kane will eventually ult, because, of course, he's going to take a lot of damage from just auto attacks in general. And press the attack proc will increase your damage quite a lot. So he's just going to take a lot of damage. And then the moment he ults is basically really a death sentence for him, because... The moment he gets out of ultimate without Rast form, he's not going to heal that much. So you can easily just insta W him, right? His ult's going to not do enough damage and you insta W him and you basically just kill him. Now, fight was very close at this point, but I do have a lot of gold. 
So right now that was one that was the one fight he could actually potentially win. But because of the W max and just the pressy attack damage, you like I basically just won that fight. As you can see with the Cinderhawk, Gam start just dying left and right. It just becomes really, really fast and really easy. The main thing you want to do to clear camps is just to make sure that you queue the camp once so you get the Cinderhawk proc. And then that way the camp just gets the burn on uh, like the burn damage on it and it just dies instantly. So it's really easy there. Now right here, this is a small trick that you can do. Uh, right here, you see the ward, right? But I'm walking up with a sweeper to this ward. So you see the ward right here. And then I, the moment I clear it, I just walk the, like the other direction. You have like, if it, if it dies like that, one, they might think it timed out because it was already very low. But if they already see you, then they're not going to expect you to stay in a lot of situations if you just walk away from clearing a ward. Now in this specific situation, the Lulu kind of walks up, Jinx walks up a little bit. And then all I really have to do is just ult in, hit my Q, stun the Jinx and basically just one shot her because I'm very, very strong right now. That's a fight going on on mid lane. Yeah, and this specific one actually, like right here, I like going for Dragon is a good play. However, in this specific situation, Zoe is fighting these two. She got ganked, so definitely want to look there. This guy's really, really low. I could catch him there. If I could just get in range of a smite, he dies here. This slow is really good. That basically just saved Yasuo's life. The uh, Kane W slow that's actually got buffed a little, bu little while ago saved his life there. One smite would have been enough to kill him, but I just couldn't get it off there. So it's, yeah. As you see right now, my bot lane is 1 and 6. My top lane is doing okay-ish. I'm 7 and 0, which is really the main issue, like the main issue and the main thing here. So you definitely need to make sure that you look to get those dragons to actually allow your team to play the game, really. Because if you don't get the objectives, then you're going to have some issues um, with your team falling behind. Now, Volley does a lot of damage and can definitely solo carry games or like, like pull, your game, pull your team through a game. But yeah. Now, right here. I just placed a control ward. Like the Jinx walks into me, which is a really big mistake because I can just walk up to her now. I can basically just right here CC her. The only issue here is that the exhaust went on the Tristana, so she lost a lot of damage on the Jinx. And then the main problem in this fight right here is the Jenna because she massively fucked up. Because it, like right here, this fight's fine. Like all of this is completely fine. Tristana gets exhausted, which honestly is a big. Like, it's a bit of a mistake exhausting Tristana over exhausting me. Because I would actually do a little bit more damage, but that's that aside. So right here, if you see, I'm currently in melee range on top of the Jinx. My W is going to come back up and a bomb is going to explode. So basically, the moment this comes back up, this guy instantly dies. And Jenna really just ults him away out of melee range. And she actually, off of the kill on Tristana, she gets her passive, which gives her her move speed. Which makes it impossible for me to actually kite her. However, in this situation, if she didn't do this ultimate, she wouldn't have been pushed away. I could have W'd her, and then my next W would have been up after I chased her, and she would have died no matter what. So this Janna ultimate basically ruined this entire fight. And yeah, right there, I lost vision, couldn't get the bite. But by the time, if I would have W'd her here, and then she would have walked down, my W would have been back up already. So I would have been able to bite her once again, and that would never have been a fight that Jinx would have won. But basically off of her pushing her back and me being unable to get my W off at that point, Jinx does enough damage and just kills us all, which is a really big one. Because now I had a I had a 1k bounty basically, or 700 gold bounty plus the 300 gold for the kill. Jinx gains an extra 1000 gold, basically one of, of one of that Janna. Just that single Janna ultimate just gave Jinx the massive, massive lead. She th currently has 6.5k to our ADC is 3.3. That's just a crazy difference. So that's really like a game turner. That's really, really bad for us. But in this case, all you really got to make sure you do is you take the farm still. Rotate through your camps as best you can. Now, right here, we get a good play on top lane with the Wukong. I did, like, he's actually in a fairly decent spot. He's very far up on the Mordekaiser, which helps a lot of the early top lane pressure. And yeah. So I'm right here. Like, the Yasuo flashes away. I wasn't barely not able to get in range of him, which is unfortunate. But the main thing here, as you can see, I'm just going to make sure that I take some camps. And right off of this, they just, like, after the last fight, the exhaust isn't up. And I do make a misplay in this specific situation because I underestimate or I overestimated the amount of damage my team would do. So I was like, okay, we can just catch the Jinx, right? So I go on, go on top of her. Now Lulu ult, Lulu shield. And then basically my Triss does no damage. 
Like she actually does no damage. Most of the damage was because of me. And then she flash heals away, which yeah, this this fight just turned out extremely poorly. I should never have gone for this play because of the fact that their bot lane was just so far ahead and so much stronger because my bot lane is one and eight. However, I did figure that if it was a 3v2 situation, we probably would have had enough to kill the Jinx. The Kane, however, was there and it kind of turned really sour really fast. And that's just pretty bad right there. Yeah, so Jinx gets even more kills and this puts the game in a pretty bad spot. A bot lane going one in nine. And yeah, it's basically just gonna have to be one off of topside right now. And the moment like they get the turret, what bot lanes will usually do is they will rotate through either mid or top lane. And that's the moment with a Wukong, because Wukong has that really nice knockup ability. We can look towards playing like that way. But I'm never gonna go back bot lane and try to one if you want to AD carry again. Because after the first play of the Jenna ultimate, it was just go downhill from there, really. So Kane and Mordekaiser are basically just gonna like... 2v1, the, like, this is the mistake a lot of Mordekaisers make, I don't know why. They just ult, like, if the jungler ganks, they just ult the target, which means the jungler gank is literally useless, because they're, the cane is not going to be able to do anything. So right here, basically the ultimate ends for Mordekaiser, Wukong gets some knockups, and I'm just going to, like, like he will most likely win the 1v1 at this point. I mean, the Mordekaiser doesn't really do much, and I can just chase the cane down into right here. I barely couldn't get in range, and I didn't want him to start eating over the wall, so I just ult him for the kill shot. But yeah. So right here, Dragon is going to be spawning somewhat soon, so I definitely want to make sure that we keep the pressure going for this. I don't know exactly where Jinx are, but I figured she wouldn't be here in time. We could just burn this really quickly and then walk away. Making sure to keep that Baron or the Dragon pressure going wherever possible. And then also keeping clearing my camps in situations like this. You can never stop clearing your camps, especially if your team is inting. Like my bot lane right now, they're one in nine. If your team is doing really, really bad, you can if you stop clearing your camps, you're gonna lose the game. So definitely make sure to avoid doing that at all costs. As you can see right there, camp clear is very easy, you just E. You can also queue the camp for the Bami Cinder proc or the Cinder Hulk proc to, to get some extra damage. But basically with a couple auto attacks, you're gonna get enough damage no matter what. Now in this specific situation, as you see the build right here, I've named Ninja Tabai to go against most of our team, because Mordekaiser is the only AP source, but he's basically useless. So you can just stack armor against the rest of our team. Ninja Tabai will reduce the damage from Jinx a lot, and then just going cloth into either a Thorn Mill, or maybe the random ones in this situation. I'm not exactly sure what I did. But I think, judging off of this game right here, I went for Thorn Mill, because of the Kane healing, this guy's healing, and then just the Conqueror healing from the Yasuo as well. Overall, a lot of healing on the enemy team, so the healing reduction would help a quite a bit. Now, this is the moment where this is what I mean. Like, the bot lane will probably not go bot lane again. Maybe look for pressure around objectives, like the Rift Herald. So, they show top lane. However, the thing is, Wukong ultimate is pretty strong. And based off of that, I can just make any engage happen on one of these two. Because the only members on our team currently, after me winning pretty much the rest of the map, is going to be these two. So if I can get them down with Wukong ultimate, with a stun, with a good engage, the, the team fight is basically going to be over from there. So right here, I mean, the fight, like this Lulu, this is the, like, if she, the moment she walked this way, she was dead. Because I'm just going to run up with Q, smite her, making sure that I can get in range. Wukong goes on the Jinx. Jinx doesn't really have any way to deal with this at all, because Wukong does have a good amount of damage right there. Lulu will die, get another knock up, and then right here, the Jinx was basically CC'd out of that fight. She's not going to be able to do anything right there. And we should be able to finish her off right here. Now this Mordekaiser ulted me out of the fight. So I couldn't really go after Jinx. But Mordekaiser was not going to win this one if you won against the Fully Bear. And off of that entire fight and just a good engage. Like that's all we really needed to make this fight happen. It's a good Wukong ultimate. Good engage on the Lulu right there. And now we can just pick up the Rift Herald. And then look towards... I mean on this point we just need to base... So right here, as you can see, I pick up the healing reduction apart from Thornmill. And now it's going to be basically down to clearing some camps here and there, making sure that you still pick up the dragons, and then just look for teamfights, really. So any type of engage situation, as you can see right there, I basically like, burst the cane for like half his HP. Like This cane specifically is a little bit of a special case. I don't know. He went for Ghostblade into red form. It's not the most ideal situation for him, but I don't know. It's what it is. Now right here... This is the type of, type of stuff you just look for. Look for flanks, look for pickoffs. You can see right here, the Yasuo was my initial plan, but the Jinx path down instead of this way, specifically. 
So I'm just gonna run up, flash on the Jinx, stun her instantly, ult on top of her. And if she didn't have flash, she would have insta died there. But she flashes out, really well played from her there, not much I can say about that one. I just can play pretty slow through this fight. If I were to have Warmox at this point, I could just sustain myself back up very, very easily, but I don't currently. Now, Wukong presses forward a little bit too much right now. Like, right here, we just need to play a bit slower. Look for, like, the, the situation where they walk up to us again. Because then I can use my Q, I can use my mobility to be able to catch them once again. And uh, Zoe makes a kill on the Mordekaiser here. Their team really can't do a whole lot in this specific situation. Kane goes in from the side, doesn't really do much. But with this Rift Herald use, we can just pressure this down. And this is the situation, like... It doesn't really matter, turret or no turret. If an ADC or like a mid laner or anything just walks out of position and you're a volley bear, you just want to make sure that you pressure Q, run at them, smite them, and just go for it. So in this specific situation, this guy, the Rift Herald is going to bounce towards turret. This guy doesn't really have any mana or flash because he just used it earlier. So all I have to do right now is just run up to him with Q, with Nimbus Cloak, with Blue Smite. And as you can see, I did a lot of damage to her just by myself my team didn't really do much damage but i basically just one shoulder right there so right here off of the rift herald it bounces we kill the turret in time we get the inhibitor in time and then this rift herald actually came in very very clutch tristana's damage comes in really clutch here as well towards getting the other turret and then mordekaiser ults me which is not a 1v1 i can win right now i didn't have my cooldowns i didn't have like a lot of stuff up there and mordekaiser 1v1ing him in his death realm is pretty damn difficult anyway so yeah, so basically off of that entire play, uh, we do get a pretty much like break open in their base, break this open after picking off the Jinx in this specific situation, and then using the Rift Herald to basically push through through an open Nexus. And Wukong makes a very good play here of getting the Dragon by himself whilst the team was dying, so they cannot so they cannot actually pick this up. And yeah, so let's go further. This is the moment I pick up Thornmill and right here we just want to look for a fight. We don't necessarily have the Baron, we basically just have to catch them once because they have an open Nexus now. So if we can just catch them once in a situation, they're pretty much done for. Now in this situation right here, I saw the Yasuo solo on top lane. Um, however, quickly after this, you see right here the Wukong has a very good flank behind these people right now. So he can just go in with ultimate flank them and that's going to be their lives over. I realized this right here. This is the moment like, I stopped chasing top lane. I saw the Wukong right here. I realized it a little late. Wukong does go in. Play happens. They do get the Jinx, which is basically all we needed to kill. And right here, just me front lighting, stunning whatever I can. Doing whatever you can, really walking up. And that's basically just, yeah, it for Volley Bear. So, the main thing you want to take away from, like, this right here is... In this game, it was basically just me carrying this completely, like getting the early gank pressure, getting early 1v1s, looking for that early pressure, making sure that you can like punish, because Volibear is really, really good at punishing a single lane completely into the ground. Early gank, get his flash, and then after the flash, you just pressure him down. After six, you dive with ultimate. All you have to do with ultimate dives is just pressure ultimate right on top of the turret, and you can just dive for free, really. There's no way the enemy team is gonna, or the enemy laner is going to live that. Objective control important and keeping clearing your camps is also very very important as well And yeah, I mean that's basically it for the jungle for guide for volley bear um, If you guys have any questions do make sure to put those in the comments below and If you guys have enjoyed, enjoyed this video actually please make sure to hit the thumbs up button because it's helped me out quite a bit You can also catch me streaming live on twitch quite regularly There's a link in the description so make sure to follow there if you want and Yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye